You're right. I'm down in the Chalfonts uh, at the Chilton Open Air Museum. Now that was a 40 minute drive uh, to come and see a couple of things which have come from sort of about half a mile from my front door. There's an Iron Age roundhouse from Puddle Hill, which is now Houghton Pit. And there's a, an old Nissan hut, a World War... I think it was between the wars, between World War I and World War II, an old Nissan hut that came from Sewell, which is also, well, it's, it's literally right next to, uh, right next to Puddle Hill. Um, I didn't see anything on the website about not being allowed to film. Let's go and find out. Well, so far, so good. I think I'm allowed to use the camera. Look at these toilets. That's a blast from the past. These look exactly like the toilets that I had in my lower school back in the late 70s, early 80s. I'd say these are 1920-ish, something like that. Even the toilets here are vintage. Let's have a look at the sinks. This is all very familiar. I've seen all this in the old school. Right, here's a quick look outside. And we'll go and have a look at the, uh, the museum itself. There you go. Right, looks easy enough to get around. I've straight away found what we're looking for. We're just here, up by the Kazi. And then, look, there's our Iron Age roundhouse. And on the way to the Iron Age roundhouse, there's our old Nissan hut. There's plenty more to see as well. We'll work our way round, probably have a bite to eat. There's a cafe somewhere down there. I'm going to enjoy this. And to boot, I'm breaking in a, a new pair of Altberg Defenders. Well, new to me anyway. This is a barn from Northolt. I know Northolt, it's not far from here. It's, it's really close to somewhere I used to work. Lovely detail inside, look. You can see the construction of it so clearly. Really nice. Apparently, it was set fire to by vandals three times in its original location. So in 1988, they decided to dismantle it and bring it here to keep it safe. It's nice to see one that's not been turned into a Weatherspoons, isn't it? It's a nice big site here that they've got, and it's a lovely quiet place as well. Um, everything here is from the Chilton Hills, so that's going to be... Buckinghamshire, Bedfordshire, Oxfordshire, mostly. There might be one or two things from Hertfordshire off in that direction, but that's not really considered the Chilterns, I don't think. Not to me, anyway. Um, this here, in front of me, is a 1915 Shepherd's Hut. Basically, what the, uh, what the Shepherd would have stayed in during lambing season. I think it's locked. Yeah, it's got a padlock on it, so we can't go in there. But this was retrieved from a local farm. They know exactly which farm it was used on. So that's what the shepherd would live in, really, I guess for a, a couple of weeks during lambing season. And then this is a, I think they call it a lambing fold. You can see a very primitive sort of construction, but exactly what the shepherd would have needed, I guess, for doing his lambing, all made out of free local materials. Now, wouldn't this look great on my allotment? For watering the chickens. I doubt I'm going to find one of them dumped at the side of the road. Forgot my windshield again. I might remember it one day. I think I found our Nissan hut, look. I am literally wetting myself with excitement at the moment. I know I usually go for the really ancient stuff, but this wartime stuff. Let's go and have a look. We're in a prefab and we'll come back in a minute. There we go. There's a bow hut. And there's the Nissan hut that came from Sewell, right next to my house. Now, only a small portion of this is actually open. I've got a feeling they use it for doing classes and workshops and things. So that back section's actually locked up. 
but if we go in the front here get a good idea of what they were like inside I think this one's been set up as a an RAF briefing room now six men could build one of these in four hours and nobody knows exactly where this one originally came from decades and decades ago it was dismantled moved to the farm at Sewell where it could have been used for who knows a shed or some sort of storage or whatever maybe it even had animals living in it who knows but it's from Sewell that it was dismantled and rebuilt here there we go the original location of the hut is unknown it's been rebuilt at Sewell Farm Sewell near Dunstable they were extremely popular structures throughout both of the wars and between the wars. Being able to put up something so cheaply and so quickly, you can understand obviously, was pretty valuable to them. Now this one, we can get right inside. I don't think this one's known as a Nissan hut. This one's been labelled as a bow hut. Maybe we can find out where this one came from or if indeed it might be a replica if you look at the good condition of the wood. Although the wood smells very old, it smells very old and tanniny. They've set this one up as some sort of little operational hut, haven't they? By the look of it, you've got an ammo, an ammo case down there, and a little bunk, and then another bunk on this side with a what's that? Is that a replica Lee Enfield? Or? Not 100% sure, I'm not particularly good with old rifles. But yeah, it seems to have been set up as some sort of little operational hut. I might pop a few of these in my bag before I leave, to be honest. <laughs> no, not really. And there's our old prefab from Amersham. They've got it really nicely set up in there, as you just briefly saw. They've even got the old ducks on the wall. I'm sure my grandparents had ducks on the wall at one point. And horse brass is next to the fireplace. These were basically emergency housing for people who'd either been bombed or had to be relocated and needed somewhere to live. I did read on the website that actually some of these photographs, etc. These are the people who really lived here. And I know that the relatives, the descendants of the people that lived in some of these buildings, have been along here to special events to talk. I think people who actually lived in this one helped to help the museum to come up with the decor. Main bedroom with a cot. I'd live in one of these, wouldn't you? Kids' bedroom. Notice the lack of electrical appliances. Separate toilet to bathroom by the looks of it. To be honest, in those days they were lucky to have a flipping indoor toilet. Oh, here's a blast from the past. Who remembers these? Look. They've kitted it out so well in here, even down to the old hodder da 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 for sweeping the floor. I thought I could stay in here forever. Just outside, outside the old prefab, you've got the little dig for victory patch. Space down there for chickens, fruit and veg. That's an interesting little bed, isn't it, with the curtains all around it? I guess if you were living in something like this, you'd want all the draft proofing you can get. got 
Oh, a second staircase going down, okay. There's our little landing. Oh, what a, there's a little attic. You can see the thatch. Can't get up there. Looks like they, uh, come on, focus. Looks like they kept the baby by the window. And here's the kids' bedroom. What a cosy little structure, eh? I don't know where people get this idea that people used to live in abject misery and poverty. It's just not true. Look at this place, it's great. Right, let's try these. Uh... Oh, I think this might be taking us down to the workshop a bit. That's our little kitchen diner. Looks like the workshop has to be accessed from outside. There you go, you've got a little kitchen in there. I'm guessing you can't get in here, yeah, there's a sink and whatnot in there. Here's your little diner and there's a, a little mini range, look. On the other side of the fireplace, the, the fireplace is directly behind that in the other room. And what looks like another little bread oven. Can't open that one, but yeah, there you go. The gem. Never seen one of these before. Right, so if we just take a quick walk around the outside, we can have a look into the um, that cobbler's workshop. Just in there. There we go, look. Lovely. I should have brought my Austrian army boots with me. Resole them while I'm here. That's Hinton Church. That's a uh, 19th century prefabricated church. Apparently the Hinton or wherever it was from, they, they didn't have a church, they needed one. So uh, they threw one up out of tin, apparently. Nice old organ there, look. Why is it playing itself? Why is it playing itself? Let's go somewhere else. This one's the old wellhead from Harpingdon. I know Harpingdon very well. Uh, now this is from the 1650s. Would have stood somewhere in Harpingdon. Any idea where? On a farm in Harpingdon. And it was dismantled in the 1960s put away for safekeeping and uh, rebuilt here in the early 90s. Not bad condition really, I mean look. That could be a hell of a lot worse, that looks like a brake doesn't it? Big simple brake, pull it down onto the wheel. I've even gone to the trouble of uh, digging a fake hole, probably not very deep. Now here's a lovely one, it's from the 1860s and it comes from Garston, which I think is in Oxfordshire. It's a Victorian forge and it's a working forge. There's a guy in there at the moment, Mark, I was just speaking to him, talking about his forge. And he does demos and workshops and whatnot in here. And it's all originally set up as it would have been. So he's got the manual bellows over at the back there been making little bits and pieces and projects. Like I said, people come along and learn how to make some simple little objects. This is all as it would have been. There's nothing electric in here. Oh, and there's an old set of bellows just down here in the corner, look. It was just telling me that the blacksmiths wouldn't have just been the blacksmiths. It would have been the blacksmiths and the farrier and the real what? The wheel right. All using the same premises. And their jobs probably overlapped by a fair bit. A little treadle lathe here. I'd like one of them. And there's another little little portable furnace with the bellows built into the bottom. 
foot powered by the looks of it. Right, I think we might go and get a cup of tea and then we'll go and find that Iron Age roundhouse. Right, thanks very much, Mark. No problem. See you later. Getting a bit of a dry throat. I think the tea is in there. It's great seeing that old forge in full working order. Uh, really nice to see that. Quick stop for a cup of tea. And I think what I'll do, I'll skip. I've got a few buildings just here, but I'm going to skip them immediately, make my way down to the roundhouse, and we'll catch these ones on the way back. Um, seeing these, it's made me think of a... There's a building in Dunstable, which any locals watching probably know all... Well, fully aware of this building. It's, uh, it's right in the town centre, and it's on what used to be known as Middle Row. It's opposite where Woolworths used to be, if that means anything to anyone. There's an old building there. The last use I remember it having, I think I'm thinking of the right shop, it used to be an old kebab place called Montana, but it's been shut for a long, long time. Um, it's part of this old row of 16th century, I'm pretty sure they're 16th century, uh, old wooden framed twisty buildings. Uh, now this one in particular, it's really in a state of disrepair. It's all held together with scaffolding and big boards and it's got, uh, it's got big steel pins running through it, stopping the walls from falling out. This building is literally on its last legs and I've been worried for years that the owner is possibly just letting it get to the sort of state. Because obviously it's a, it's a protected building being so old and it just makes me wonder if the owner is, is just letting it get so dangerous that he's allowed to de demolish it and build something else. Now that is a, it's quite a large, quite a large old shop. Really beautiful, twisty old building, absolutely ancient. Um, it would be nice to think that maybe one day that building might end up here because its immediate future doesn't look good at all. Let's go and find a, an Iron Age roundhouse from Puddle Hill. I feel like an old Bronze Age farmer walking my pigs to market. Now Puddle Hill, which is now Houghton Pit, was excavated by Manshead Society, the local archaeological group. I think this was in the 1950s, just before they started quarrying that particular bit of the hill out. And they found the postmarks and the footprint of an Iron Age roundhouse. That's the exact spacing and layout of what they found. Now obviously, they didn't find an entire roundhouse, they basically found this, but they took that pattern and reconstructed it here at the Open Air Museum. I didn't know that they had a veranda in the Iron Age. I've never been in one of these before. I'm sort of a bit in awe of them really. They're just such an excellent little dwelling. Basically just made out of made out of the ground and the land around you. Probably no chimney. They tended to just let the smoke dissipate out through the thatch, which would help with bug control, etc. There you go, it's all wattle and daub. With a straw thatch. Let's have a look inside.